All right, so I'm going to write that first equation down that was on our PowerPoint, which is that Cl2 SO2 coming chloride and sulfate. And I'll walk us through how we figure out which one's which for the oxidation and reduction. Now, clearly by looking at this, I hope you guys can notice that it's not a balanced equation. Uh, I will do balancing equations in our next lesson. So don't panic that it doesn't look fun. Okay. All right. Cool. Let's go back to the document camera. Don't worry, it's on my sheet, the first example we're doing. And then if you feel like you need another one, I'm happy to do another one. Okay. So when you have a full equation like this, you need to unpack it and figure out how the oxidation numbers are changing. Um, so in the do now example, you guys could clearly see where the electrons were and that helped you figure out which one was oxidation or if it was reduction. In reality, we're gonna have full equations and you won't be able to see the electrons and so you don't know how things are gaining or losing electrons. That's why we need the oxidation numbers because the oxidation number changing indicates to us then who's being oxidized and who's being reduced. I suggest go through each element to check it um, so that way you can verify which one's which uh, because you never know. All right, so the first thing we're looking at is our chlorine uh, gas. This one is an element, so its oxidation number starts at zero. And then I'm checking the, uh, now chloride. So chloride has become uh, an ion, and I see that's a negative one monoatomic ion, so its oxidation number is negative one. So that's my first one done. And again, I'm gonna look at all the numbers before I make decisions on who's doing what. Uh, I'll do the oxygen next because oxygen is nice and easy and then we'll worry about sulfur last because it needs to do some oxidation math for it. So when I'm looking at the oxygen, I see that oxygen's in a compound and so, and that compound is not hydrogen peroxide. So based off the rules, that's going to be minus two. And then I see on the product side with the sulfate, again, I have the oxygen. In this case, it is uh, in a polyatomic ion, but because, even though it isn't in a polyatomic ion, the, the rule still applies that it's negative two. So unless it's in the element form or it's in hydrogen peroxide, I can if it's um, in a compound or an ion, then I know it's negative two. So that's how I know that, that guy. So what I can tell from this reaction so far is that my oxygen is not involved in this redox process because the oxidation number hasn't changed. Last one we're going to do then is our um, sulfur. Now sulfur is a little bit more complicated because it doesn't have something nice on the rules that we can just use and pull. We need to do some oxidation math for it. So I'll walk through it just because I know some people weren't here the other day. Um, I'm going to be using multiple rules to figure out sulfur. So I see that uh, I have two oxygen atoms and each one has the oxidation number of negative two. So total I have negative four. And I know that overall um, molecules need to have a number of zero. So if I'm thinking about this algebraically and I only have one sulfur atom, whatever I'm adding to whatever the oxygen is contributing needs to equal zero. So that means the sulfur is positive four. See how we got there? Okay. Um, what I want to add about this, be mindful, oh, actually I'll do that later. All right, so that's on this side. And then on this side over here, I see I have four oxygens. Each one is contributing negative two. So total is negative eight. However, since I'm dealing with a polyatomic ion, I'd set the equal to negative two because that's the charge of the ion. So that's negative two plus my X value. Again, there's only one sulfur, so I don't have to worry about doing any divisions to that. When I'm doing the math and the algebra, I find that X equals positive six because if I have positive six and negative eight, those things add together and make my negative two. We good so far. All right, so now I have everyone's number and that helps me because then I can figure out who's oxidation, who's reduction, and uh, gain and loss in the electrons and things like that. So when I'm looking at my chlorine, I see it's gone from zero to negative one. 
So Cl2 um, has gone from, and I'm just going to shorthand it. So oxidation number we have going from 0 to negative 1. So I see that there's a decrease in my oxidation number. Now, since there's a decrease in oxidation number, I have gained electrons. How many did I gain? I was looking at that. One. Just one. And so therefore, this is my reduction reaction. And chlorine is an oxidant. Let me move that down so you guys can see that. Hopefully this is all ringing a bell. All right, oxygen is not involved, so I ignore it. All right, and then I have my sulfur dioxide. So the sulfur, actually let's just write it as the element and ignore the molecule. So sulfur, the oxidation number, what am I doing? So the oxidation number, when I'm looking at it, has gone from positive 4 to uh, positive 6. Uh, the oxidation number, in this case, has increased. So I have lost electrons. It seems kind of counterintuitive, like losing electrons um, means increasing in numbers. But you have to remember, electrons are negatively charged. So losing them means it's going to become more positive. Um, how many electrons would I have lost? lost two. Just two. So I've lost two electrons, and therefore that one's my um, oxidation. Making, um, actually, let me fix that so it's a bit clearer, because I don't think I like how I wrote that. All right, so we should actually be referring to things as the reactants, as the oxidant and reductant. So in this case, chlorine is... Um, a reductant, no, oxidant. Sorry, that's a bit messy. And then in this case, when I'm looking at my reaction, the sulfur dioxide is a reductant. Let's zoom that out. Uh, do keep in mind that when we're talking about oxidation numbers, we are talking about just one atom, one element. Um, so even though with the oxygen up here, I've done multiple and I've shown this as a negative four, when I'm writing, I'd be talking about oxygen being negative two. And same thing over here. Even though I've written negative eight, that's the total for each of those oxygens together. When I'm writing about it, it's specifically, I would say oxygen is negative two. So just be careful um, with your writing and explanations that you're talking specifically about one atom and not the total when you're doing your oxidation math. We good? All right, do you guys need another example? You're okay. Yeah, hopefully this rings a bell. All right, so I'll put those three other questions on the board for you guys to do. Um, while you're doing that, I'll have a quick kind of flip through of my stuff for thermo. So we can do some thermo as well while we're at it. Sound a good plan? And then you guys don't have to worry about coming in on Friday. Unless you want to meet the pediatrician slash emergency room doctor. All right, let me copy down that equation so you guys can see it. So that's the hydrogen peroxide one. And like I said, remember, they're not balanced. We're going to learn about balancing in the next lesson. All right, let me get that. Ooh wee. That is blurry. Okay. Uh, and I'll try to keep to the same color code. I know what's going to happen because I can tell by looking at it. Okay. So... Oh, thank you. <laughs> All right. So uh, let's go through this one by one, check how the oxidation numbers are behaving so we know which one's oxidation and reduction. 
Um, this one here is my hydrogen, and I see that hydrogen is in a compound, so that means that it's going to be plus one. The other thing to keep in mind are the exceptions to the rule, which is if I have hydrogen and it's in a metal hydride, it'll be negative one, but that's not a metal hydride because it doesn't have a metal element in there. All right. On the product side, I see hydrogens again in a compound. So if it's in a compound, it's still positive one. So I know hydrogen's not involved in my redox reaction. No change in oxidation number. Are we okay with that so far? Okay. Um, let me grab my next color. Just trying to figure out how the numbers are changing quickly. Okay. So oxygen in this case, it's in hydrogen peroxide. And so it's in a compound. Normally, if uh, oxygen's in a compound or a polyatomic ion, I'd expect it to be negative two. However, it is an exception to the rule because it's hydrogen peroxide, so it's going to be negative one instead. And if I want to double check my math to make sure that I'm applying the rules correctly, since this is a compound, it should equal zero. And when I'm looking at that, I have positive one, I have two of them, so that's positive two. I have negative one, and I have two of them, that's negative two, positive two, and negative two added together, zero. So I've pulled my numbers correctly. All right, if I put a negative two for that, then I would expect the um, compound to be a negative two charge on there. So you see how you can double check your work that way? All right. In this case, I have oxygen in a compound. It's not hydrogen peroxide, so this one's now negative two. And I think I got my colors the wrong way around, which is a little bit irritating. Let me change that to blue so that way they all match on the other sheet. Because that's my reduction reaction. All right. And then the last one that I have there is my iodide becoming iodine. Iodide is an ion. It's a monatomic ion, so it's charge going to be, or sorry, it's um, uh, oxidation number is going to be this, uh, whatever its charge is, so that's going to be negative one. It's okay that these two numbers are the same because we're looking for changes in numbers. Now I see in the product side it is an element, so that makes it zero. So go through everybody in the equation, assign them their oxidation numbers, and then check to see who's increasing, who's decreasing. You should always have one that increases and one that decreases. Um, so the one that is increasing is my iodine. Um, so we have it having its oxidation number going from uh, negative one to zero. In this case, there's an increase in my oxidation number and I must have lost uh, one electron in order for that to happen because now I'm going to a more positive number and therefore this is my um, oxidation reaction. making iodide the reductant. Make sure you're tying it back to the specific reactant that uh, is the oxidant or the reductant. All right. Next thing is my um, reduction reaction. So I have um, in this case, what was it? The oxygen, the oxidation number has gone from negative one to negative two. There's a decrease in the oxidation number and I must have gained one electron for that oxidation number to decrease by one. Gaining of electrons means that this is a reduction reaction and I know that the hydrogen peroxide is the oxidant. Specifically, if I'm looking at it, it's the oxygen and the hydrogen peroxide. That's my oxidant. Is that what you guys got, hopefully? Cool. All right. What questions do you have? It's good to see another example. I'll leave that up. All right, I think you guys probably need some more practice on this just by like walking around seeing how you guys are doing with this. Um, so what I'll do is I'll hold off on thermo for today, I think, let you guys have some more time to process this. And then when I see you guys tomorrow, I'll do the thermo tutorial and we'll hold off on doing any more redox. Does that sound like a good plan? Yeah.
Yeah, I don't want to give you too much information in one go. I just want to give us the worksheet. Yes, yeah, because that's the homework. And I want you guys to do more practice. Cool. All right, I'll leave that up. I'll pass out the worksheet because I'm mindful some of you guys might have already done those four equations. I'll put the equations back on the board in a moment as well. The quicker you get those rules memorized, the faster it's going to be. It's going to be real. You got to keep checking. Hey, you can do that. Whatever you guys feel like working on. So if you want to work on this, you can work on this, or if you want to work on something else, you can. But if you work on the redox now, then, it, then uh, me and the student teacher can help you answer the questions. All right, can I move it? Oh, 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 oh.